Hello. Hello everyone, it's a honor to be here, mildly terrifying. Um, well, my name is Alberto Petronio. I'm the lead concept artist of the vehicle team of Cloud Imperium, Game, Cloud Imperium Games. My main project is Star Citizen. For those of you who doesn't know what the project is, Star Citizen is a multi-multiplayer online uh, video game set in an explorable universe uh, with dozens of planets that are one eighth of the size of the Earth and that are freely explorable without any kind of uh, loading screen uh, on foot or on board, the, on board of uh, particularly meticulously crafted vehicles and spaceships. We have hundreds of spaceships, and each of them come with their own manufacturer. We have 16. Uh, you could compare it to what in real life Ferrari, BMW, uh, Renault are. Um, each of them is the target audience, their level of technology, uh, their branding, basically. Um, every ship is really detailed. So they are the center of our gameplay, and they have uh, bespoke interiors, they have uh, bespoke handling, different maneuvering based on the shape, based on your aerodynamics. So we can quite say that there is a lot of love that goes behind these ships. As a disclaimer, I work only on 3-4% of the ships you see here, so this is the work of dozens of artists that came before me that helped to bring this universe to life. And yeah, this is a common problem. Two years ago, I was the only member of the concept vehicle team left in the company. And I came back to where I came from uh, in the 3D vehicle team as a concept artist under the same art director. And I thought that that would have been an uh, incredibly good um, possibility um, to transform the way we manage deliveries in the concept art world, or at least in our company. So highlighting responsibilities, deep depth of thought, and the research that should go behind props of this complexity. So to show you how we did that, I will bring you through a little journey, and maybe if we have time, a little extra. And I will show you three different ships. Uh, one is a small um, combat and uh, performance vehicle. The other one is a military medium tank. And the last um, is a commercial alien spaceship. So quite different between each other. And instead of analyzing each one, I will just bring in more of a flowy um, examine of how our workflow works. So, yeah, we start. I think I went too far. No, it was right. We start with ideation. Um, we are a team of four in the vehicle team, uh, so each of us have different style, but each of us starts in 3D because we have to make sure absolutely uh, that we nail uh, the metrics of the game, uh, the size of the components, uh, the size of the vehicle itself, where can it fit. Uh, the pilot position, the player position, the pilot points of view, and we just don't want this stuff to fall on the 3 dr team. Uh, this is an example of what uh, one of these ideas might look like in an advanced stage, but when it's not chosen yet. Uh, in this case, uh, I loved this option, but it was a bit too big, so we decided to settle on something that was reminding a little more um, of what's the archetype of a motorbike, because that's what we were trying to do. And we decided to go with the first two, uh, one for combat, one for racing. And I'll show you later how this project became. Uh, right now, I will show you the Tumbrin Storm, a light tank. This was my second uh, vehicle ever, so in concept. Uh, so I was a little more insecure. I tried to cover a broader, uh, uh, broader options. We have something a little cyberpunk for option A, uh, something retrofuturistic inspired to the World War I British tank. Uh, for option B, is something way more safe and contemporary for option C, and I'm quite happy to say that A1 and another uh, completely different project was the Gatak Sulan. This was an alien ship uh, made by the manufacturer Gatak. Gatak takes extreme pride in the way they control gravity and their gravitation technologies. So we had to make sure that that technology 
was respected in the initial concept. And that's why in this particular case, according to use 3D, while in other cases like the, uh, the motorbike, we bounce from uh, Photoshop to Blender, sometimes some of us uh, use Grease Pencil. In this case, I have to make sure that I nail the animation from the first point, because they were such a particular part uh, of the spaceship. So the spaceship ops and opens up when it flies and closes down um, uh, when it lands. I remember still one day, uh, Mark, uh, our uh, lead um, vehicle designer, came to me and said the sentence that would have modified the future of this project. He came to me and says, we always do spaceships like they're planes. Why don't we have one that looks like a rocket? So that's how the Seulen Fund is champion. At this point that we have a champion for each of our, uh, each of our vehicles, we have to solve a lot of problems and I have to show that this will work pretty well and will look pretty similar in game to what we have in concept. And that's what is a little uncommon in the concept art community. There are things like aesthetical changes. I study them in Blender, sometimes in Photoshop, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but there are much bigger problems. For example, we try to reuse animations from other existing motor-like looking vehicles. And why should a 3D artist do structural changes if a concept artist can study this kind of stuff? So we have to uh, be a little more accountable for the way the 3D art, the concept art works in the video game industry, considering how complex a props like this can be. We had to make sure that the components fit inside it, because uh, our game has physicalized components. If you want to upgrade your ship, you have to upgrade your, upgrade your components, and you have to extract them. So a particularly challenging and fun part to do was actually the fact that the cooler and the radar are same size, but asymmetrical, because the cooler get taken from the largest phase by the player, and the radar doesn't. So I had to make an asymmetrical thing that could work also for 3D artists, and I cannot put a symmetry in the concept, otherwise I make their life much more difficult. And this is the option that we came up with. Uh, it was quite fun to show it to my art director. We, nobody believed uh, that this could have been possible. Now there is a little bit of compenetration, but got solved in the, uh, later on. Different problems came along also on the tank. We wanted as much more turret visibility, obviously, but we also wanted to fit it in as, in as many spaceships as possible. So you can say, you can see that I was quite unexperienced with this one, because I would consider this quite a not elegant solution. Uh, so we went uh, with something a little more subtle and definitely more functional. Uh, sometimes we have to study things like interior, where does the player come from, uh, what's the visibility, where do we put the UI, uh, where are the controls, stuff like that. But nothing in terms of interior was as complicated <laughs> as the Seulen. So for the first time, instead of a plane, we had a tower, <laughs> a flying tower. And we never did floral like this, so there was not one light uh, line straight. Everything was tilted, oblique, very weird, and we embraced this limit that we had in the concept, and we embraced the design of something that looks actually very uncomfortable, uh, but nevertheless alien. We studied how it looked from outside. How does it look in third person when you set to go in, in third person? And I had to make sure that since we did such a weird type of concept, um, that every downstream team was on board with what we were doing. So I had to make a lot of animation to explain how this thing works. Again, this was justifiable because this uh, Gator guys, the Sian, uh, control gravity really well and take, they want to flex it, basically. We had to study how the components get out. Uh, so my art director tasked me to study a little more interesting way to show the components rather than just an a door opening so everything is fractured. They really want to brag about the level of technology. And we put the animations in what we consider the most important part of the ship, that is the cockpit. So we embraced uh, the Gravlev in its full capacity. At this point, we can start polishing. Generally, I start with materials. Um, I use decal machines sometimes. Uh, I use the decals in game. Uh, I try to be as more procedural as possible, really. Uh, rough map generally comes from a cubic projection. I know it's nothing. It's nothing fancy, but we work with the rule of cool because we are not the ones that make the final asset in the, uh, uh, in the game. And we tend to reuse 
the setups across manufacturer because it makes our work way, uh, much more valuable if it can be used twice. If you're interested in this particular one, it's just uh, handling an object to control a gradient. It's nothing special. This one doesn't want to be too technical. Um, but yeah, sometimes I use UV as well. You can see on the right, for example, that the logo of Mirai, the manufacturer of this, um, of, of this vehicle, appears, but just in the rough map. Uh, so that it could look just a little more intentional, just a little more designed. And we reuse that setup for making the uh, racing variant, as there are a lot of liveries in the real life racing world uh, that, that just do this. We did some pre visualization <laughs> for how the components get delivered, and we did some pre visualization, pre -visualization of how uh, the final stuff will potentially look like in game if we did no errors. So in this case, it doesn't really worth to mask things with Photoshop, because why am I doing it if in games it will look worse? Our end game is game. So in the finalization of the tank, the storm, uh, I actually, as I said, I was a little more insecure, so I took a different approach. I sketched 2D a lot. Also, the side panels that you see here can blow up. So I had to study also how the interior looks like, and then I modeled after them. Uh, so it's like being your own concept artist and your own 3D modeler. Uh, materials were a little easier because I just had to look at real life tanks. Unfortunately, the news are full of those images. And then I studied uh, animation for entry text. I studied how the weapon gets delivered to the player, how the components get delivered to the player and did a final visualization that is not far apart from what these vehicles look in game. But we can take things even deeper. For example, in uh, flying spaceships, I do a pass for the thrusters, and the thruster determines how maneuverable a ship is, and we do this part in concept phase because we don't want to arrive to the last moment that the model is all done uh, in 3D in game, and then we put the thrusters in their final position just because we want them there. I get associated with a designer to do this part, but we want the thrusters to be a part of the design and well integrated in the final keywords. We studied the exteriors. I did it with nodes. In the beginning, it was meant to be Damascus. Uh, it ended up being something between coral and rock. Uh, Dan, one of our exterior artists on the project, actually remembered about this concept that went in the Blender file on our service and basically checked all the node group and recreated it in Substance Painter designer. Pardon. This was the first ship of Gatak that we had in game, so we couldn't recycle stuff from our AI manufacturer, and we definitely couldn't recycle stuff from our uh, human manufacturer. So I had to come up with some concept to have an idea of how you unlock uh, a door, what comments look like. Um, we had to let it look alien, something absolutely disconnected. I was told that this was a bit too complex, so I done scoped and went with this option that is static. Uh, but since my model saved a lot of time to done, he actually came back in game as soon as he had some free time, remembered the concept and tried to integrate it in game, make, bringing basically the best of both options, animations and design. Uh, this, just as a disclaimer, means use in the Cyan language. I did some little hint uh, to what a trim sheet could have looked like for this manufacturer, as this was the first uh, spaceship for this manufacturer. And I proceeded with some final visualization. Again, our main point was to flex how technologically advanced this uh, spaceship was. So, um, Gravlev, that is generally considered something a little lazy in sci-fi, was quite protagonist in this case. And this is the, um, how it looks in the end. We tend to do promotions. Some of, our, uh, some of our ships get actually sold with a lot of concept uh, detail and a lot of promos. Um, but we tend to do a little bit at least of all of them. It's quite easy, to be fair. We just borrow stuff from the Environment 3 dr team and uh, apply some material that are compatible with uh, Blender. It's nothing complicated. A lot of fog, 0.6 for the anisotropy, remember that. Two, three area lights, I tend to go with no more than those, uh, I put in game some of the characters that we had, uh, rigify, rig, rigify them uh, quite quickly, just because we didn't have any character riding a motorbike. And yeah, this is the final result after a little passing Photoshop with uh, just to bring a bit of snow and a bit of atmosphere. 
Same thing was done with the tank. Um, we had some 3D scan uh, ground. Again, a very light HDRI. It doesn't even influence the final lighting. A lot of fog, because we, I, I wanted really that Blade Runner vibe, and a huge area light on the top. Sometimes we use uh, ob objects that can create shadows, but in this case, was not the case. And the final result had to speak for himself. So this has to be sold like something that can take down a name tier vehicle. And it can, uh, and it can do it with a lot of firepower. It can do it fast. It can do it in group or alone. Different approach was taken on the Siulan. The Siulan had its main characteristic, the interiors. So we had to highlight those, letting it feel oppressive, but alien, and kind of a bit holy. And that's why this part, that is the cockpit, has a dome, but is also the cockpit, uh, because it's the glass on the top that becomes the, uh, the front faces part when this ship is flying. We did some shot with this bigger brother, projected by uh, Michael Oberschneider. This ship is not in game yet, so that's why I talked up all the time about the fact that this unit was the first one from GATAC, but it's been concepted already. Uh, the land version and some exterior, but I've been speaking a lot about the fact that we are very well connected with the 3D art team, and this is the result between concept art and final art. So the second one is the one you see in game. And as you can see, it's not that far apart. So since I think I have some little more time, I would like to show you something a little new. Three days ago uh, was CitizenCon. Uh, it's our main event from our company. We presented the Star Lancer, our newest ship. It had to be the super version of this one, one of the most beloved ships in the universe of Star Citizen, the Freelancer. So we had to maintain the DNA. Uh, we did a bunch of options, as usual. We compared the size. Sometimes we were kit bashing from older manufacturers. Uh, prefer, for example, in this case, the manufacturer is MISC, and we have a lot of stuff from MISC. Uh, I take pieces, put them together, trying to find the right DNA, and we settle down with this one. That, as you can see from, uh, the, it looks quite a lot like the freelancer has the same DNA, has the same curvature and it tries to obviously call back uh, at, that, um, at that vibe. Uh, with the designers, uh, we started playing with interiors. We tried an option that was open uh, on the belly. We tried an option that was closed. We studied some option for the, um, lo uh, for the upper deck, understanding how the flow works better with the kind of gameplay that the ship is meant to have. We studied the docking color, how this connects to other spaceships or to other space stations. And this was the final res uh, result. I wasn't really satisfied at all, though, with the materials, because the materials that I had from the other ships that you've seen earlier were meant for a much smaller scale. So instead of reworking all the materials, I just went in our folders and take as many materials as I could from the, uh, from the game. I did a quick unwrapping, a uh, cubic unwrapping. I know, shame on me, but it works. Uh, some decals still from the game, and the result, you can tell, is quite close to what these might look in the final, uh, in the final game. So since the, exterior was, uh, since the interiors were a little big, we selected three rooms to do a vertical slice and just try to understand uh, how the style of the ship would have worked like. Uh, this one was simply a bit too big to be figured out completely uh, by the concept artist. So we have actually um, the recreation area, we have engineering, and we have the drone operating room, as this is a base building ship. And at this point, we started selling the dream. So you arrive on, your, on an explore planet with your friends and start trying to find a place to settle. And then you build your, your base. But what if base building and farming is not exactly your kind of gameplay? What if you want something vaguely more spicy? Well, we had a combat version. And the combat version changes its narrative, so we stay on darker tones, red and black. Absolutely more threatening and oppressive. The interiors are inspired to World War II ships. So this is, for example, the turret room. And you can see how much the... Um, the values have changed compared to the option I showed you before. Uh, we have the turret room with gray and, uh, gray and red. We have the dropship part with gray and red. And we changed um, 
this color palette just for the medical bay because it has to look a little more inviting. And the concept, in the end, looks like this. So, I spoke about putting thoughts behind things so that they make more sense in game, and in the pre-production phase, you know what something will look like in game, so, right? So this is the presentation that we released uh, three days ago. A huge thanks to the 3D vehicle team. They did an amazing job with this. And if you, have, if you can take something from this talk, uh, I would say that investing the proper time in research and development from concept artists can save a lot of time to a lot of more 3D artists in the long term. Um, this would have been impossible for me, at least, without the 3D tools. And if you want to work in video games, but you are thrown off by how complex some of the part of the workflow are, like topology, rigging, UV mapping, and you want to take a more creative approach, well, there's space for you. So thank you, everyone, for your attention. It was a honor to be here.